let's start with our question two. So this is section B. These are our long questions now. And it says, the diagram shows the different parts of the brain and the ear. Okay, as if you didn't know this already. So A is the cerebrum. The rule is always write in the labels. Okay, B is the medulla. Ob long gata. And remember, your medulla oblongata regulates all your vital uh, um, functions in your body. Then C is the cerebellum. Okay, D, well, they round structures. It's not actually drawn correctly here, but anyway, we'll forgive them for the diagram. Um, those are your semi. Circular canals. And why aren't they drawn correctly? Because they are always at right angles to each other. These look like a little tunnel, right, of bangles. And then E is the cochlea. This is for hearing, and your semicircular canals are involved with balance and equilibrium. Okay, that's what keeps you upright. Cochlea, responsible for hearing. Okay, I is going to be your tympanic membrane. And another name for the tympanic membrane, membrane, is the ear drum. Okay, so you can call it the eardrum or the tympanic membrane. Then, F is the oval window. And O, you can see the shape, and then G is the round window. And the way to remember it is O comes before R in the alphabet. So your oval window is on top and your round window is below. And the function of the round window, the oval window, is to, is to transmit impulse, at least the sound waves, the pressure waves, into the cochlea. And the round window's job is to get rid of the excess noise. So theoretically, if you were in a sealed room with your face like this, okay, and someone shouted into your ear, and you opened your mouth, sound would come out, their voice would come out of your mouth. Okay, you would be able to hear it. So that the reason why is the round window will then transmit the excess pressure waves out into the middle ear and it would dissipate here in your throat area. All right, to go down the, oh, I didn't do this one. H is the Eustacean tube. And in little ones, in, in babies and toddlers, this eustachian tube is very short. And when it is short, that in, they end up getting lots of infections. And those infections cause issues because the middle ear blocks up. And if the middle ear blocks up, they can't hear properly. So we put grommets in, which is something we went through just now. So I'm going to take that out. Okay, now, identify part A. Um, a, if I remember correctly, was the cerebrum. Okay, and it doesn't matter if you're now writing it twice. It doesn't matter. You need to do this part so that you can understand what it is you're going to be answering. B is the medulla. And you can't just call it the medulla. It's the medulla oblongata. Medulla means middle. So you can't just say it's the middle. It's not. It's the medulla oblongata. And H is the eustachian tube. And the eustachian tube's job is to equalize the pressure from the middle ear okay, and the outer ear. Because if that pressure here isn't the same as the pressure here, it's going to damage this eardrum or tympanic membrane, and we don't want that. Alrighty, now, it says, give the letter 
and the name of the part of the ear that absorbs excess pressure waves from the inner ear. Well, I told you just now, it is the round window. Sound waves go in that way to the cochlea and the excess comes out here. And what it does is it actually prevents an echo. That's why we don't hear echoes. All right. Easy peasy. Um, oh, hang on. I've still got more questions here. Okay. Then, name the receptors found in part E. So let's just check part E is the cochlea. So let me get another color here. So the receptors in part E, which is the cochlea, Okay, I'm just putting that in brackets. Those receptors are going to be, oh my gosh, I've just gone absolutely, the organs of corti. Okay, corti written with a capital letter, and these are fine little hair cells. And what they, they're your receptors. And what they do is as that pressure wave comes in, the sound wave comes in, it causes a wave-like motion inside the cochlea in the endolymph. And that stimulates those little hair cells as they then bump up against the, the membrane. And that stimulus conver is converted into an impulse and sent to the, the cerebrum so that you can hear. Okay, that's how sound works. Okay, so your receptors in the cochlea are the organs of corti. And they are little hair cells. Explain why damage to part B will lead to instant death. So let's just check part B is the medulla oblongata. So why will that lead to death? Well, the medulla oblongata is, let's write it, the medulla oblongata is responsible for regulating, and this is important, your heart beat rate and breathing rate. Your heartbeat and your breathing rate are always connected. Think about when you do exercise. As you exercise, your heartbeat rate increases, and your breathing rate increases because you need to get more oxygen in and get more carbon dioxide out, okay? Because that's part of the process in your body, which you would have done last year, of cellular respiration to produce energy. So, and when you slow down, when you're now finished exercising, what happens? Your heartbeat rate and your breathing rate now needs to slow down. All of that is controlled by the medulla oblongata, okay? So, your breathing rate and your heartbeat rate, okay? So that's what it does. So when damaged, um, there will be no breathing rate, breathing or heartbeat. And uh, what am I doing? Let me just... Uh, Heartbeat causing death. I mean, clearly, if you're not breathing and your heart isn't working, you will die. Okay, so damage to the medulla oblongata will cause death because it controls your breathing rate and your heartbeat rate. If you damage it, no breathing rate and no heartbeat rate, you're dead. Alrighty, then. Describe how C response to impulses received from D. So let's just check how impulses from C, which is the cerebellum, respond to D, okay? Rece received from D. Okay, so how would that work? Um, easy. At the end of the day, what are we looking at? We're looking at the cerebellum,
quo receive the impulse from D and respond by sending impulses via let's do motor neurons okay to the skeletal muscles okay and when you get to the skeletal muscles to correct balance and equilibrium because that is the function of your of, of the semicircular canals as you are falling forward or you're falling sideways you are no longer upright and that stimulus is converted to an impulse by d which is the semicircular canals and they will then send a a convert the stimulus to an impulse and send it to the cerebellum the cerebellum is going to receive oh hang on i must also add here the cerebellum will receive the impulses from the and it will interpret sorry and interpret and respond okay so it interprets those impulses and it responds by sending impulses via the motor neurons to the what to your skeletal muscles because it's your skeletal muscles that are now going to if you're falling over this way your skeletal muscles are going to respond so that you go backwards think about a, a newborn or a, um, a two or three month old baby trying to learn to sit they have perfect semicircular canals they have perfect everything but they don't have muscle control so they are unable to control their muscles that's why they'll sit 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 and then they fall over it's their balance and equilibrium cannot be maintained because the cerebellum sends impulses to the muscles the skeletal muscles but the skeletal muscles aren't ready yet to do what they're supposed to okay so the next question here in older people Part F of the ear may harden. So let's just quickly check what part F was. I can't remember. Part F. Part F is the oval window. Okay. So in older people, part F is going to harden. Explain how this condition, okay, will lead to hearing loss. Oh, well, that's easy. The oval window, which is part F. So the oval window will no longer... Um, vibrate freely okay or vibrate easily because remember that's the job of the oval window it takes the the, the, the pressure waves from the sound waves and the hammer the anvil and the stirrup vibrate against the oval window which then vibrates and that vibration passes into the into the lymph fluid um, the, the endolymph fluid inside the cochlea so if that window is hard, it's thickened, it's hardened, it can't vibrate very nicely. Okay, so it won't vibrate freely. It may not vibrate at all, but we're going to say it won't vibrate freely. So what's going to happen? We're going to have fewer vibrations. Um, will be carried into um, the cochlea cochlea oh for heaven's sake you see when they tell me I'm, I'm running out of time and I start to panic and then I try to ride faster into the cochlea and what happens then so the organs of corti are less stimulated okay and if they are less stimulated what's going to happen then we're going to have therefore less impulses are sent to the cerebrum 
You can also say instead of sent, you can say transmitted to the cerebrum, and therefore we will have it resulting result in loss of hearing. And if it's extreme, the person will be deaf. There will be no, they won't be able to hear because it just will not vibrate at all. Remember, everything in the ear works with vibrations. All right, it's vibrations, it's movement, it's move pressure waves.